We have a service call that some cold rails are not working properly. This happens to be the condensing unit for those cold rails. So the complaint is the customer has one, two, three cold rails that are all turning off midway through the day and then turning on at the end of the evening and running properly. This particular system has a cold zone rack covered in grease right now because of the type of exhaust system that they have that doesn't properly make the grease leave the building so therefore everything's layered in grease. So I pulled the panels off the rack. What I'm going to do in this particular situation because we don't know what is what, usually there's a legend. At all my stores we typically have a legend that try, you know, somewhat makes sense so that way we can see. So if we look on this right here, someone's labeled CR, CR, CR. So this says that system B controls cold rail, cold rail, cold rail. This is actually in the Cook's line, so that's not the one we're working on. This right here is the service station so cold rail system D, cold rail system D, cold rail system D. The three that they're complaining about is the salad station, the cold side, and the hot side cold rail. So that's all system D is in David. And notice system D is the front cold rails. If you go into the controls cabinet, doesn't look like there's much going on in here. There's two defrost clocks. They're actually labeled system F in system G, so that's not S. So we could come through here and look at all the letters. There's also letters up here B, A, C, D. I happen to know that this compressor has been pulled out of the rack, it's not being used anymore. And it's actually this condensing unit over here because they were having capacity problems so we added a bigger condensing unit. So this is system D. Currently right now the customer said that it works in the morning of which it's working right now. That condenser fan motor is cycling on a fan cycle control which is right there. So we're running. It's frosty cold downstairs. I already checked it so all the cold rails are working at the moment. We are running a clear sight glass, but what the manager told me kind of already led me to what the problem was. He says that it runs amazing, but then it just falls off the map and stops working for a period of a few hours. And then it turns back on in a few hours and then runs for the rest of the night. Well, that leads me to the defrost clock because we actually cycle all these things at nighttime. So if you look at this defrost clock, it's currently about 7.45 in the morning and that defrost clock says 11 p.m. and notice it's about to go into a defrost for five hours. So the defrost clock isn't keeping time. So this is gonna be more than likely gonna be an easier one. So I'm gonna pull that defrost clock apart. We're gonna go ahead and replace that defrost clock and we'll go cover off the clock. Um, I did confirm that it has 208 going to it. That's correct. I went ahead and shut off the breaker so I can get in here. Just want to kind of do a little review on this clock. This is a DTAV40. This is a standard electromechanical defrost clock. It uses sets of relays instead of just the mechanisms in the clock. That way I can handle higher amperages. Um, so you can run a compressor through this. If you look at the condensing or the box, it usually tells you uh, contacts two and four, which is your uh, refrigeration switch mode can handle a 40 amp resistive load and one in three which is your defrost uh, switch leg can handle 40 amp resistive also so that's one cool thing about these DTA V40s they can handle a decent amount of amperage um, this one right here this is a standard operation you can change some things you got to read in the instructions but standard out of the box it's going to operate uh, line one is going to be power to the clock. Uh, the end line is going to be your common to the clock. So one 
and N are going to be power in common. Two is going to be the common side of the switch leg for number four. And one is going to be the common side of the switch leg for number three. The F terminal, we're not going to use that, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, the X terminal is for defrost termination. We're not going to use that right now either because we're just working on a simple on-off circuit. So all that we're going to use, we're going to take a jumper and run it from line one to line two. We're going to apply power to one. Then we're going to bring our switched leg. is going to come out of four, turn our compressor on, and N is going to be our common for the clock. So I got the new clock in there. This, the one thing I forgot to mention is this new one, the DTAV, is auto voltage. The old one is a DTMV40. That was a DT multivolt. The difference is this one had a switch. You could switch between 120 and 240. This one automatically figures that out. They've got resistors or something stepping down the voltage for the clock, I'm assuming is what's going on there. They're probably just using resistors. But um, the, the clock itself is wired back in. I did it just like I said I was gonna do it. Everything's back in there like it should be. Powers uh, line one is going to one. Then there's a jumper from one to two. Then the switch legged or the switched leg is going to four. That's turning my compressor off. And then we have our common terminal. We've got line voltage or line two coming into common and then also jumping off of N. So there's two wires going to N, common from the breaker and common going to the compressor. So the only leg we're actually switching in this clock is gonna be line one power. And that's coming off of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply power now. Uh, we can go ahead and set this clock. So I'll look at my thing here in a minute. Uh, we want this thing to defrost from midnight until five in the morning. Shuts off the cold rails from midnight till five in the morning. That's our defrost now. So we don't run any defrost throughout the day. This is just to give the cold rails time to defrost. They do have thermostats that turn them on and off, so they should regulate pretty well, but we just need a lengthy defrost in the middle of the night to go ahead and melt all that ice off. So I went ahead and turned power on. As you can see, it's working off of a fan cycle control, so the condenser fan motor is not running yet. There it goes, just turned on. And we can go ahead and test it to make sure that it's correct and go ahead and rotate the clock, click it into defrost, the condensing unit just turned off. So we are working correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and click it out of defrost and we're good to go. I'm gonna watch this thing, make sure uh, everything's looking good, but I think we're done. Make someone else's life easy just because I know this restaurant really well. I went ahead and made a note on here that system D is outside of the rack. Then I went over here to the compressor. I wrote not in use up here, system D. It's hard to see, but outside of rack and an arrow pointing back. And again, not in use, system D. That way the next guy doesn't come here trying to diagnose a compressor thinking there's no refrigerant in the system when in fact it's just cut out. So then I labeled over here on the clock what it controls. And actually when you pop the lid, it actually already tells you what it controls right there. And then right here on the condensing unit, put it right there. That way the next guy it's easier for him. So this guy seems to be running okay. I went ahead and also, I used the same box because there was no need to change it for the clock, but I just put a new cover on there. That way the date, because there was dates written on the back of this one when it was installed, uh, those are gone now. So that way there's not a bunch of writing. It's a new clock, new cover. Here's the cold rails in question. So this is one of them right here. Got some hands over there. And all it is is just an ice, you know, a cold wrap. And I'll go to the next one. This is their hot side. And then right over here, we have their cold side. So that particular condensing unit runs all three of those cold rails. So we'll go ahead and recap. 
I had a service call on some cold rails not working. Uh, when I arrived, uh, I spoke with the manager, walked in, shook his hand, said, hey, what's up? Had him explain to me his complaints and his issues with the box. In talking with him, I kind of already had a hunch because he said that the box was would, would run first thing in the morning, but then midway through the morning shift, it would shut off for a few hours and then turn back on towards the evening and run correctly for the rest of the night. So I kind of was already leaning towards the defrost clock just with his description. So the, you know, the more information you get from the managers, you know, the easier it's going to make your call. So went onto the roof, confirmed that it was a defrost clock issue. I went ahead and replaced the defrost clock and the unit is operating properly. Everything else was looking good. While I was on the roof, I went ahead and checked all their other systems that had defrost clocks, make sure that they were operating properly and they were, they had the right times on them. Also just opened up their ACs really quick, checked to see if there was any error codes on them. They're Lennox units, so they're the older ones that have a pro uh, Prodigy board. Actually, no, not a Prodigy board, the M17 boards. So I went ahead and checked those for the error codes. You know, no issues with those. Just, you know, being observant while I was there. Other than that, the box is working properly. Checked out with the manager. He was cool and happy, and everything's good.